championships aren't won on the final shot alone. It all starts with the commitment to stay healthy and on the field for your team. Q Collar, essential brain protection so athletes can chase greatness. All right, midfielders. Here in Attackman, we get an abundance of, you know, talent, opinions, so on and so forth. It's one of those things where, you know, coaches are going to have to go decide, like, I want initiators, I want shooters, I want finishers. Like, you get your pick at the litter here. Um, just from our perspective, who are the midfielders that we feel like are going to be the most popular on 9 more? Well, the guy who's going to be the least popular is probably the number one player in the class. If not, certainly probably the number one or two midfielder, and that's Dylan Faison. And it's interesting because, you know, I've, I've made this comment for about five years where the value of having a oh, clearly defined number one player in the class is really high relative for everybody else's ability and by everybody else, I'm referring to college coaches who create the consensus that we reflect, their ability to compare everybody else against that guy, right? And so I think with a class of 23, the fact that everybody knew McCabe Millen was the number one player in the class, but was injured that summer made it difficult for everybody to like imagine all right, how does this carry, How does this player compare to Millen? And I think it was kind of similar with the 24s as well for, for the exact same reason. And So now with Faison, it's similar but different in the sense that I think a lot of guys watched him this summer, but nobody watched him through the lens of, am I going to recruit him? Because he's already committed to play football and then subsequently lacrosse at Notre Dame. So I think it cast the class and certainly the midfielders in a little bit of a unique light as a result. Every time the ball goes into a stick, something also happens. He has this ability to ma manipulate slides that other high school guys just like don't really do or get yet. Um, but he will take two steps one way just to get the slide to start, you know, shade that way, knowing that all he really wants to do is bounce back to his left hand, and now that slide is longer, right? He does stuff like that that um, other high school guys just don't really do to the same degree. And then on top of it, like, when that slide comes, if it's his time to be a feeder, he has the step away and has great vision and this ability to just, like, put the ball right in our rope, right to people's ears. That, like, back pipe scrape feed that we see a lot in college is harder than people realize because people can make it look so fundamental. And he's one of those guys that makes that, like, back pipe scrape feed when they slide too early and aren't really really low with their help uh he makes that look so easy and um and that's just like talking about him with the ball and his stick right and i think that's where like he excels but he does a good job within the offense he does a good job of like starting the offense if he needs to do it with speed um like if he has a short stick and can go and invert like it just puts so much pressure on a defense and um yeah i think at the end of the day like when we come time to like have our number one discussion it'll be like if it's not him then it's James Gillis I saw Gillis at Platinum Cup and and then saw him all summer long I mean he he did everything he played like pretty much every day and there is a question as to whether or not he's a midfielder or an attackman I think he's better as a midfielder because I think that his skill set in space in a top-down dodging environment is more threatening He's a lefty who is so fast, but the thing that impresses me the most is the precision with the ball as a feeder and as a shooter. His ability to pick corners is right up there at the top of the class, which is important because about a third of this group are primarily step-down shooters, and that's what you're going to ask them to do. He could do that, but that's a waste of his talent because... His ability to long dodge and throw back an incredibly accurate lefty feed or short dodge and throw it through the defense, both of which I saw in the span of a three-goal sequence, him do all three of those things, and it just continued all summer long. So, you know, for me, I think I spent a good percentage of the summer wondering why, is J why isn't why is James Gillis the number one player in this class? And now I just think he is. I think my first description of him was Alex Ovechkin, just because of he has like a an explosiveness about him that I think is really like, um, you know, you you might feel like, all right, where is he? Where is he? And then all of a sudden, bam, he's there and he's making you know this amazing feat. But he's also got the like the Sidney Crosby vision aspect of it too. So he's like a mix of both of them. 
which I know I'm throwing some you know pretty hyperbolic terms out there, but you know I, I love his explosiveness and precision kind of combined into one. It, it's just really a combination that is pretty brutal, and he can just take over a game. You know, it, it just feels like he snaps his fingers and like, all right, this is my game now. I'm good with it. Guy who kind of is a completely different model midfielder for me. Terry, you really put him on my radar. Is Michael McCollian uh, out of uh, Culver playing for for Sweet Lax over the summer? Kind of similar in that he's really looking for the home run plays a lot, but <laughs> what he does that that cross field skip pass is just a sight to pull. And I remember the thing that we really talked about was: is he an offensive midfielder, a two way midfielder, or a defensive midfielder? And you know, I was pretty insistent in his ability to play offense, but there's no question that he's worth a look as a D mini because he is so competitive on ball and he's so athletic. But the reason that I think he's a threat offensively is because of the vision that pairs with that desire to make the home run play. And I think we're kind of envisioning the same play from main stage where he dodged down the ready alley and he threw a flat cross field skip pass to a ready shooter on the far side. Ball didn't get caught, went out of bounds, should have been caught, and it should have been an easy goal. And it was an example of, yes, you can criticize him for making the difficult play when he could have just banged it through X, and then that ball gets delivered to the far side or dodged on the backside and whatever. But, you know, for me with McColgan, it was it was not just the, the types of plays, but the consistency with which he was making those plays, for sure. What really stood out to me was his ability to be under control as a dodger. He, he could feel the pressure on his back. He... he can still dodge at full speed and go get his call zone number and step in for for some powerful step downs or get a cannon of a ready shot on the run but the the assists really really stand out and just the the stay with sweet lax uh one of my favorite players all summer was nick grayfield his flat out speed in the open field was just a, a sight to behold and just his underhand and sidearm passing and shooting which just, these guys are just next level uh in their turn in terms of the release points of their five teammates and pick that part can we keep with sweet lives for a minute here definitely and go back to culver with cormac's game dan you might have a better idea of what you think his role is going to be in college because he just does everything everything that i've seen him is you know he's a guy who can play defense um, he does everything between the lines he can shoot really well obviously he has the last name, the pedigree that comes with it. So you know he's got the fire. He's got the uh, the intangible, what is it, you know, from growing up in that household. Um, but he's a player that I really like on the surface. Yeah, there's two um, 2026 Culver midfielders to throw in that conversation. Um, Bennett Hendricks is another one that kind of fits that same mold. Really athletic, um, hard shot, righty. But they're a little bit different. Hendricks, I think, is a little more... Um, physical, right? A little bit more of a stronger uh, presence, skiing faster, does more, has a little bit more versatility to him. Um, both of them were excellent at showtime. Um, I very specifically recall, you know, each of them having like, uh, you know, a, a ton of success in their own right, but definitely Cormac who had a ton of goals uh, in that and really just showed off a lot of what you were saying with that, like strong right-handed overhand shooting stroke with a um, with time and room but also like plenty of ability once he gets going downhill and can shoot it on the run as well. And I put um, um, Bennett in the uh, same category. Rick Giordano, yep, another guy uh, played at IDX in the fall of 23, so definitely popped on the radar there. Another best in class type of, you know, kind of mainstay. Um, and, you know, Brunswick, prime time. So definitely on, on the radar, right? And just slings it and no fear um ton of accuracy ton of heat uh i think i think there's more to his game but it's kind of hard to get there because the shot is so prominent and then another one who i would say is kind of the exact opposite in so far as you know really kind of pop for me at midsummer is a good counsel mad lax midi in drew demarinus who when i asked a division one head coach like how good is this highlight video because you know, he was a good console leading scorer this year they had a great year in the wcac and he was their leading scorer 
the response I got back was, he shoots the ball like Tom Schreiber. I was like, I don't think you can say something better about a player than that. So that really, you know, popped for me and, and was something that I paid a lot of attention to over the course of the rest of the summer and, and very interested in seeing where he ends up because, um, you know, that's a skill set that translates to pretty much every, every offense, every program. I want to stick with the difficult names to pronounce. <laughs> Harry Schneidwein. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, I, I pronounced that. He's really two-handed. It, that really stuck out to me watching the Baltimore Crabs throughout the summer, but uh, predominantly lefty. He wants the, the roll back to his left, and he just puts it in great spots. It, it, like you said, step down is there, but I think his ability to beat you off the dribble and put it in offside hip is just... Uh, it, he, he's really fun to watch. And his evolution this summer is interesting because another one of those McDonough guys, um, but he played a ton of defense in the spring. So I knew of his game, but I didn't know of his offensive ability. Um, and then really, um, you know, like you said, does a great job of winning matchups, getting downhill, a sweep to the left hand, alleys to his left hand, um, and rolling back really kind of a traditional throwback like alley dodging and sweeping midfielder that can really take wings and play um, defense and does a lot of, um, you know, the, the hard work in between the lines and that's what's asked him in this water. So to transition from the shooters with the hard last names to pronounce, let's get back to some of the athletic animals who are just, they can tilt the field uh, with their athleticism. So I'm going to throw out a couple names, and if anybody wants to jump in, Chris Doshna, who I know has been evaluated three times. There's a lot of familiarity. Billy Weller, Cooper Keel, Sean O'Boyle, Henry Boyd. I mean, my thing is Doshna is uh, just as traditional of an upstate throwback midfielder coming away from one of the early weekends of the summer, I was talking to somebody and he was just like, yeah, actually he was on our radar because of um, Marcellus's uh, New York state tournament run. And we had somebody there watching games and they just were like, yeah, there's this, there's a sophomore at Marcellus. who's awesome. Um, I think that he didn't, I think he had a little bit of an uneven summer. I think that there was, you know, some of those weekends that, that didn't necessarily reaffirm the position that, that he had carried in coming away from those, those high school games, but I didn't see him. Every time I saw him play, I thought he was excellent. Billy Weller, familiar last name, especially for Michigan fans, and a Deerfield uh, next-level kid who is just kind of... The thing that stood out watching the countdown was his nose for the moment and you know his willingness and desire to kind of take a game by the scruff of the neck. And then Cooper Keel is, again, somebody who we've been watching for more than a full year, uh, DC Express, Bullis kid. And one of the things that stood out to me he's a lefty, was with the New Balance underclass event that DC team was a little bit shorthanded offensively, and he played a lot of attack, which is not something that I knew that he had in his game. So there are more athletic freaks uh, than just those, but but those are the ones that that I feel like uh, I want to mention. Do you have any thoughts on O'Boyle or Boyd? Well, yeah, I love both of them. Boyd um, really, really pops for me uh, in addition to everything you said, but is just extremely two-handed. Right, so I think that just makes him infinitely more dangerous. You're not going to be able to shade him one way. You're not going to be able to take one side of the field. You're not going to be able to cut him in half um, because he's going to be able to beat you either direction. And um, he shows that pretty consistently. Oh, Boyle, I'd say, is a similar skill set. Really, you just kind of a, a, a freak that's going to consistently draw slides, and you can't afford to let him get ahead of steam. You're going to have to get out and have a pre- presence and crowd him, and all of that is going to lead to just a, a pressure on your defense that – uh, an offensive coordinator was going to want to have, therefore you want to go get yourself some Sean Boyle, right? Um, I think that all kind of checks out to me as well. Dan, uh, a few guys that I want to get your take on that are up, up here on the board because uh, they're all, I think, pretty unique. Um, Camden Clack, Nick Testa, Jake DeGenero, Adam Ponting, Hayden Delaney. Okay. Uh, let's start with Ponting because you said you used the word unique. I think he's probably the most unique of the group. Um, uh, he's a rock stars kid from uh, north of the border playing at Lawrenceville tall, lanky but I think what I like about his game most is he, he wins matchups uh, I think at the high school level a lot of times uh, one matchup results in a crease feed and I think for Ponting 
he's already elevated beyond that, right? And he's now looking through. He sees through the defense, and he really punishes you with skip passes. And, um, you know, in that Lawrenceville set, they run a lot of their offense with six guys above the goal. So now you're able to get, um, you know, skips down to the pipe, and he just sees the field at a level that most high school guys don't see the field at, especially in the midfield, right? And so I think that's one thing that makes him unique. Um, Hayden Delaney, really, really, really speedster, right? Like just goes by guys, typical um, of him to see him winning matchups and uh, getting his hands free, right? And I think that's one thing that midfielders are always going to be asked to do at the end of the day is, you know, go run by somebody, get your hands free. Nobody comes your direction, you're going to stick it. Uh, and I think Hayden Delaney does that um, really well. Um, you see, let's look well, back I, up Nick Testa is another guy yep. that, you know, Terry just brought up. And, you know, in that NLF club championship game, he was phenomenal. He was everywhere. And, you know, he's awesome. He's on that team. You know, he's got so many, like, great guys around him. So it's going to be like interesting to see, like you know, how does he play when when Faison's not, Faison's not out there, et cetera. But his decision making was what really like stood apart for me. Um, you know, he's a guy that's explosive, but then knows when to be explosive, which is a very like subtle but very important distinction. Uh, and to add a voice, uh, Patrick McEwen, who's not here today with us, but Patrick went to main stage for us. And that was one of his most um, prominent takeaways of the day was he said that he felt like Nick Testa was the midfielder that goes to college, excuse me, the attackman that goes to college and then gets moved into a midfield spot and is asked to invert, except that change already happened. And so now he's just getting reps of what he's going to be asked to do in college. And he does everything that you just said on top of it. So I think at the next level, like you see him as an initiating midfielder that can step on the field and go from any spot, right? You can put him in a pair on the high corner. You can send him to X. You can let him invert. You can have him in initiate out of a two-man. Or you can just let him square up and go at it from anywhere against anybody in a solo, just dodging him on his own. So You said you hate player comparisons. I don't think I have a comparison of a player in this class to a former college player that is stronger than Nick Testa to Joey Sessa, the former Yale yeah. midfielder. Yeah, I see that. I totally do. Um, yeah, versatility all over the field. Initiator is going to get slid to and make a really good decision, and if you don't, then he's going to make you pet. So I totally see that. How about De Janeiro? Uh, De Janeiro, I think, is a little more versatile. I think if you asked him to play defense, he'd be able to hunker down and do a good job. Um, I think, again, like we used the term, like, throwback midfielder to talk about people that are A, versatile, and B, are at their best running downhill versus, like, squaring up on a wing or on the high corner or working in a two-man. And I think he does that all really well. I think if you asked him to go and win matchups against 90% of the country, he's going to do that really, really well. He's two-handed. Um, he popped for us originally last summer at the countdown. Um and again, just does a really good job of kind of being an all-encompassing, you know, every down, so to speak, midfielder. Um, and I think didn't, that's kind of, um, you know, how I would describe this game. One, two, three, yeah. In this game, impacts aren't just expected, they're celebrated. That's why premier players choose Q-Collar, the proven shield for their brains. Be ready for the clash. Keep your head protected and in the game.